Well, greetings. Thank you for joining me once again. In today's video, in today's spell lesson, I'm going to be sharing with you another spell directly from our Book of Shadows. And uh, this spell, once again, is one to stop somebody, maybe someone that has something over you or someone that could share information that could potentially get you into trouble, that type of person. You want to shut them down, if not just for a short time, to stop them from taking this to the next level. Now, once again, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't fix the core issue. But what this does is put a Band-Aid on the situation, at least for a short period of time. So in this spell, which is a traditional witchcraft style of spell, we will be using different herbs and a few oils that really pertain towards shutting someone down, keeping them quiet and, and perhaps protecting you, if not for a short period of time. So it's very helpful, for example, in legal battles where there's information that when somebody could get you into trouble by dubbing you in or telling on you or disclosing that information, you want to shut them down or you're blocking someone that might have something over you, um, reporting you to the IRS. So it's very good for people that, for example, have businesses and maybe you've got a pesky employee that's, um, you know, you know, they could have one over you, so to speak, if you don't shut them down a little bit, that type of thing. So it's basically a spell. This is directly from our Book of Shadows. I'm not even lying. It's it's one directly from our Book of Shadows. And uh, literally the header here is to stop a person from causing issues. So it's a temporary blocking spell. So let's get into it. So in this spell, I'm going to give you a little tip, something extra perhaps you can do to add a layer of protection before you begin this ritual. So you probably have heard of the very popular stave, which is the Helm of Ore. I'm not going to even pretend that I can pronounce the proper name for it, but uh, the Helm of Ore is a very popular protection sigil. Now, I have been using this for many years, even though I haven't, I don't have a tattoo of it on my body and I don't have a visual representation of it anywhere at the moment. The way I use this stave is probably a little more traditional if you want. So visualize what that sigil looks like. I'll put one up on the screen somewhere here. And what you do, the way you traditionally do it, or the way the Vikings would do it, is say on, on your forehead, let me just part of C's, you use, actually it's your left hand that you use, and you use a spit from your left hand, and on your forehead, what you draw is that sigil. Now, you might th say, oh, you can't actually see it, um, but any type of sigil or seal isn't, it visible to, it, well, it, it helps if you can see it, if it's important for you to feel the energy of it by visualization, but really it's an antenna to the spiritual world. And that antenna or the energy of what that sigil represents, I'll just call it a sigil, but like the helm of all, this has a lot of energetic um, power already for protection. And so it's meant to be um, evoked or, or drawn via spit or, if you like, oil or blood, whatever you want, onto you at that point in time. And actually, normally it's in between the eyes that you draw it. I will say the same can be done around your office. So if this is a workplace issue. What you can do, you could probably use the spiritual oil. We'll go into that in a second. And you can just draw the helm of ore somewhere in your workplace invisibly to provide you that uh, that level of protection. So just a little tip before you start. All right, now let's get into the spell and what you need. What you're going to need in this spell is a white candle and a brown candle. A white candle naturally is for 
protection purposes. It's a, it's not really a color. Black and white aren't colors, are they? So the white in these rituals is for purification, is for cleansing or protection, if that's what you want to say. Now in this spell, we're using the color brown because brown is symbolic of bringing wishes into reality. So in this spell, we're wishing something or we're desiring something and we want to be bringing that into reality. So we're going to use a brown can candle. You'll need a little cauldron here. So here is a cast iron cauldron and I have a charcoal piece inside, which I'm going to light so I can get it started. This is a self-lighting charcoal, in case you haven't seen them before. Now this is going to be used, you're heating this up because you'll be burning herbs on the charcoal disc. So you'll just sit that in the cauldron and that will be ready to use once it starts to go grey. Again, you'll need a parchment paper, magical pen. <laughs> Once again, if you want to use your magical ink to write, you're more than welcome to. In this spell, I'm going to say it really doesn't matter. You're going to need some salt. I'll just say any salt. For this, I'm using actually Hawaiian black salt, but that's not important. You can use any type of sea salt. Doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be fancy and use Himalayan, so be it. It's That's totally fine. Now, as I said, this is a witchcraft spell, so there's certain oils that you can use, but I'll give you a choice here. If you don't have any of these oils, traditionally you just use olive oil. It doesn't even have to be extra virgin as I'm showing here. It's just, um, you know, you're using the herbs. So the herbs have all of the energy anyway. This can be just a carrier. Um, to dress the candle to make it sticky if you want to put the herbs on so it's not imperative that you have the oil. So the oil that you could potentially use if you want is sun oil if you like but any type of oil depending on your situation of course you could use something like stop gossip or uh, shut up something like that if you're really wanting to go into the more hoodoo or conjure systems but um, for the witchcraft spell side of it you use the, the sun oil. Now for the herbs we're going to be using some cloves. Cloves are really good to stop gossip. So um, um, I like to use whole cloves but if you've already smashed it into a powder then so mm -hmm. be it. I'll give you a quick little tip here if you're really trying to stop gossip. In the hoodoo system, what you'll do is get a red candle. You'll spike this candle with the cloves, like you'll stick it in there in the candle so it looks like um, the red candle has spots. You'll light the candle and you'll just think about that person shutting their mouth. So that's a, that's the way you would do it under the proper conjure or hoodoo system. We're not doing it that way, but just an extra tip. The next thing to stop gossip is slippery elm, slippery elm powder. Um, once again, this is, yeah, for, for stopping of the gossip or stopping the person from talking about the situation. Next, oh, we have some mandrake. Mandrake is a classic witchcraft herb. Of course, that is used for protection. Now, if you're doing this at home and you have more time, you can just hold that herb into your hand and think about the energy that it projects. Some of you will be able to pick up on the energy of every herb. That's totally um, an individual trait. I don't try and pick up on the energy of the herb, but what I say, like, almost automatically in my head is I thank the herb for its properties and hope that it'll help me in the spiritual work that I'm um, doing. Now the next is the vetivert. This herb is very good for overcoming obstacles. So that's what we want to do, overcome this situational obstacle. The next is the holy thistle or blessed thistle. What a fabulous little herb this is. 
Holy thistle is very good, not only, for example, um, in the hoodoo or conjure system, it's renowned for protection from evil. On a lighter side, it's said to make men more virile or, or better lovers. So maybe you want to create a tea or a suppository or maybe bake a cake with lots of blessed thistle in there for your man if he needs to improve his skills as a lover. <laughs> The next is the Dittany of Crete. Now, Dittany of Crete can be a little hard to get. We get ours directly from Greece. It's got a furry sort of little leaf. I don't mind the smell of it. Some people don't like the smell. I like the smell of it. Or some people might even say it doesn't have a smell. But uh, this lovely little herb is excellent for calling to the spirits and not just calling to the spirits as in necromancy but for spirits to hear your request so it's quite it's a very old school spiritual style of herb that's Dittany of Crete the next is Penny Royal where is that here it is Penny Royal so Penny Royal is a very powerful guardian herb it's very good for drawing in good luck so that is definitely a little herb that we want for this situation, overcoming this situation. So the reason why I'm sharing with you all of these herbs is because, you know, there's lots of other herbs that you could use, but it's really important that you research the herb and make sure no matter which herb that you put in there, it has a purpose that specifically pertains to what you're trying to achieve. So right now I'm just going to turn this down a little bit while I smash my herbs together in the cauldron. Now while I'm smashing these herbs together, what I'm really thinking about is the purpose of the herb and how it's going to benefit the situation and how grateful I am to be able to combine these herbs under the energy of all the planetary influences to be able to achieve this outcome, all that sort of ramble in my head. Now, I just also thought of something um, for clients with businesses that aren't acceptable to the mainstream, so illegal businesses essentially. You'd probably have a different type of combination that you'd mix up to be putting on your charcoal disc. What you'd be really mixing up, I have used it all, something like devil's shoestring, um, dragon's blood resin, and um, maybe even cinnamon. And you'll smash that up together and put it on a charcoal, um, a, you know, you'll burn it on a charcoal disc and basically uh, take it through the house, basically take this scent through the house asking for the spirits to protect, also take it like around all the walls, all the perimeters and make sure you go around the windows. So that is really important to silence, um, protect the house, but also stop gossip and stop um, deter individuals who could be interested in what you're doing to actually take the next step. So that's something that you could be doing. Something a little different, right? So anyways, once you finish with that mixture, what you'll be doing is taking a little pinch and putting it on your cauldron. And what this is doing is releasing the scent and the purpose of all of those herbs over to the spiritual world. That's what we're asking for. Now, if you want, you can dress the white candle with the protection oil, with the sun oil. Um, if you wanted to be traditional, what you'll do. Now, if you're following hoodoo or conjure, you'll probably dress your candle where you're wiping the strokes towards you. Light that candle. And what you'll do is you cleanse the space wishing any negative energies or entities that don't serve you and the highest purpose of this spell to be removed from this space. 
You can also make a choice at this time to walk around and cast a magical circle if you want using the white candle, keeping it super, super simple. Next, we'll be writing our petition. It's your choice if you wanted to do it with your ink and quill. So here I'm saying the target's name will be, and then an action, so in this case it's silent, at not doing the next action, like connecting with the IRS about XYZ. So it could be whatever about you, your name, your business name, whatever that is. Once you get really clear and passionate about that, What you'll be doing is taking the salt and putting some salt in the middle of that petition. And then you'll fold that away from you. Turn, fold it away from you again into basically a little small square. It doesn't need to be perfect. So basically you've made a little protection packet of your request. Then you're going to put it in a bowl, a burning bowl, a fireproof bowl for later on in this spell. Okay, so that's, these are just bay leaves. You don't have to do that. That's just what I have at the in the bottom of my fireproof bowl right now, but that's what it looks like. Next, now for the brown candle, you, here's some choices. Don't do anything, don't engrave it at all and just dress it. Um, that's your first option. Secondly, you could write a rune on it, such as, let's think about the protection rune. And I think, I'll probably pronounce it incorrectly, but it's called Aziz. It's for protection and defense. And I like the idea of that in this case, because we started off by drawing the helm of ore into your forehead with your spit, if you can remember. I don't know if you can see that, but that's just the protection rune, Aziz. Okay. Oh, you could write your name on it, whatever request, but I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. Dress this candle with the sun oil. Remember, I'm leaving the wick out of it. If you like, you could also use some of the powder on the candle. So sometimes you could put it there and roll it in the powder. There's a light dusting over that. Some witches like to, um, you know, dress around the candle if they want, feel like they could protect it, protect it. You could also use some of the salt around the candle if you desired. Sometimes I feel like that's just more visual, but I'll do it for you today. How about that? Now you're going to light the candle. Oh, what you could do is, if you want, consecrate now the candle in the herbs. Light the candle. So what's most important at this point in time is that you have a really clear intention of what you're trying to achieve. So in this case, we're wanting to visualise 
imagine what it would be like for this person to shut their mouth, not to speak up about this situation, to keep quiet, not to take the action perhaps they now want to take organically. So we're, we're really seeing them shut their mouth, binding their mouth. When we're really focusing on this candle, that's what we're doing. We're also thinking about the solution or the outcome, the next steps in resolving this issue, whether it is to um, have another person come in to help resolve the issue, but you're seeing this issue being resolved and closed out. So this person now is completely shut down because there's nothing now to talk about. There's no uh, recourse for this person to take. So try and hold that focus for a while. Um, whatever it takes for you to stay here and focus, whether that be chanting or if, if you want to put on some music that helps you focus, uh, get into state, we like to call it. That is something that you could do. So flip on your music right now. Other people like to dance around and chant. If there's a group here, sometimes we'll do that. We'll walk around the area chanting, dancing. Really depends on that type of spell. Now, if you're into chanting, here is a little incantation that you could say in your mind, and I'll put it up on the screen. Burned out of sight, out of mind, your wicked talk I shall now bind. Your words, they will not damage me. As I so will, so mote it be. You may want to put it on a post-it note in front of you so it makes it easier to remember. Every now and then, just put a little more uh, of the herb onto your disc. So I recommend doing that for around 20 minutes. So that's why if you have some songs that you like to play to keep yourself focused and in state, do so. Maybe you want to go into a meditation, that would be awesome as well. But really spend this time to connect with what you're desiring and the potential outcome. Fast track 20 minutes, obviously this is going to burn down a, a little more, not all the way down, but a little more. The next thing that you'll do is go back to the piece of paper that you put in the bowl. Now is a chance to set that alight. While that's burning, you may also wish to repeat your chant, such as burned out of sight, out of mind, your wicked, da, 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 da. you can just keep on chanting that as, the, as you watch this paper burn. Or you can just visualize this person shutting up and not causing you any trouble at all. And that's it. So be it. Nothing more to do. Now, here is another option. For this spell, I've showed you with a taper candle, just for demonstration purposes, because it's larger, easier to engrave into for, for you at home. But really, why not just use a chime candle. I like chime candles, they're about four inches and as you can see this has probably been around 30 minutes already depending on the environment. It really hasn't burned down very fast. If your candle hasn't burned down very fast what you can also do is snuff out this candle and come back to it. Do a little bit of meditation focus on the intention and keep doing that day after day until the candle has consumed itself then you don't oh you don't need to rewrite the petition every day that part of the spell is done then with the candle remains it is said that you should go outside and bury it somewhere if that's not possible just throw it in the trash on trash day making sure it leaves uh, your premises straight away okay and that's it so it is done well it's been a pleasure sharing this spell with you and i hope you catch me next friday as well so may your spell casting be auspicious bye for now